As a Kiji state prepares to choose a new governor later in the year, infighting threatens the victory of the all progressive Congress. And the illegal oil mining saga in River State, the governor has accused a police officer of the illegal activity. Well, this is Plus Politics. I'm Mary Anna Cole. The Ekiti State gubernatorial election is fast approaching and with it, another crisis seems to be brewing within the All Progressive Congress. A former Minister of Works, Dayo Adeye, has warned against the imposition of candidates on the members ahead of January 27's shadow poll. He said members would resist the plan uh, to impose a candidate on the party, adding that it would be a disastrous one to allow the imposition of an unpopular candidate to fly the party's ticket. He urged the national leadership of the APC to adopt a direct primary mode to select its candidates for the June 18 governorship election. Now, late last year, Special Advisor on Political Matters to the President, Senator Baba Femi Ujudu, warned that the division and disunity among the members of the party in Ekiti State could deprive the party of victory in the coming election. Well, joining us to discuss is Bimbo Daramola. He is a former member representing Ekiti North Federal Constituency 1 in the House of Representatives. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. So, I mean, everybody's wondering what exactly is happening within the APC in Ekiti State because um, all hands need to be on deck getting ready for June. Well, that, that would, you, you're, you're becoming an advocate, advocate of the APC now, but, um, and that's nice to have you on our side. To have APC on the side because you're concerned. I'm not advocating. I'm just being a journalist. Well, fantastic, but then that that sounds very pleasing to my ears that we have you that have been expressing this kind of interest in our party. But um, that being the case, um, political parties by construct will always be um, a cauldron subsidence of some sort. Um, cauldron subsidence in geology, which is what I, which was which was the course I studied in school. Um, talks about constant combustion of ideas, interests, and all of those inter, um, inter um, party issues. And that is legitimate in a place where there's a permanent contention for power. Mm -hmm. Now, what you will be asking will be power to serve who or in the interest of who. Ordinarily, um, one would expect that um, because you belong in the same party, you have subsumed and subscribed to the irreducible minimums that has brought all of us together to say, okay, fine, we lay down our sovereignty and we're willing to pick up our collective and corporate sovereignty and then advance the people's interests. Mm -hmm. Because if you do a simple calculation of politics minus people, what you get yourself. And then you may as well go and do something else if you want to do anything with yourself. The reality that we are faced with today, and it didn't just start today, it's, it's lasted for three years. Some of us have been outside of the main stream of the party for the past three or four years. Not that we like it so, but because we have attempted to say the establishment couldn't do this, couldn't do this. The provision of the party would naturally have us do this. Don't run against... So you're America. saying that the APC has been hijacked by certain people in the past three years? Is that what you're oh, speculating? I mean, it, well, well that, that's very true. I mean, if you if you go get on the streets in the kitchen today and you mention Toko Toko, everybody knows what Toko Toko group means. And that is um, means um, irref, irre, irrefutably um, from the heart of, of, of the governor, so to speak. Um, people who love the governor from their heart, that's the meaning. Um, but I'm not too sure any of those guys actually love the governor more than some of us who care about his date with history. There's a judgment of man, which is fickle, but there's a judgment of poster posterity that it, nobody can tweak with. And because nobody can tweak with that, some of us who have known him for long enough, 12, 42 years, going strong now, um, we're concerned about the legacies he will be leaving behind. We're conscious of the fact that there will be the judgment of history. I want him to be on the right side of history. We want him to be able to hug his past and not for his past to haunt Is that him. why you, you know? did, collapsed your structure and stood behind uh, the candidate um, Bamidele today. Is that the reason? Because I know that you used to run the campaign of Governor Fayemi. Very, very true. Thanks for that. Um, 
I, I decided to collapse my structure to um, work with um, Senator Michael Opayim Bamdele because it exemplifies everything that I exemplify, you know. Um, he's a thoroughbred Ikiti person, indigenous by nature. He comes really strong with heavy credentials that will make him anybody's pride on the face of the planet. But Nigerians, and, Nigerians have gone past credentials. We've had leaders who somewhat have had the credentials, but when it comes down to delivering on the dividends of democracy, yeah. we hardly see that. Well, you see, um, when people talk about the dividends of democracy, there are ways and perspectives to it. It's not just in giving the Marwas and the Kekes and um, um, the cutlasses and all of those things. Those are not dividends of democracy. I'm Fantastic. Sorry. So we're on the same page. I wonder why you're categorizing No, no, that. but then that's what they say. That's what the, the ordinary man on the street Who's understands. They? Oh, ordinary man on the street. Oh, we don't see you. You've not been giving money. You're not around all the time. You're not, you're not giving stuff to people. You're not identifying. That's what the ordinary man on the street identifies. But who tossed the ordinary person on the street to see that as a dividend or to see that as a form of empowerment? It's the same political class. So why are you blaming that's them? Not, for thinking? That's not very correct. You're making it appear as if the, politi the political class suddenly emerged like Charles Doyle's story. We are a product of this society. Exactly. But right. So if we're a product of the society, we cannot totally begin to go into the process of delineation and then acquire a new nature. We can't. Legitimately so, I was born and raised in this environment. And so I'm going to walk into my future with the traits of the environment that raised me. Hmm. So now, if a legislator is voted into position, for instance, he's got three jobs to do. Go make laws, represent the people, and appropriate resources. End of story. But nobody wants to hear that. And we understand because poverty has been weaponized. And everybody wants survivor at all costs. And because you want survivor, you want every dime that you possibly can get. And so the job of the, poly of, of, of the parliamentarian for, um, for, for all it means in, on this part, of the, on this part of, of the globe has been skewed and now interpreted to mean that empowerment, what we call empowerment, now should be how many cars you're able to give, not how many jobs you're able to give. And this is where the interest of this campaign is going. Hmm. I am particularly interested in this candidate, in this, in, this, in this aspirant, because he has defined his values and his character supports the values that he espouses. Hmm. And on the basis of that, I am strong in my mind. When you talk about, creden about credentials, will you give your wedding dress to your cousin or your brother or your sister who is a tailor in training? No, you won't. And so that's where your credentials, your capacity, your competence, your capability speaks to the issue. But he's and we're talking about wedding dress now. We're not talking about politics that affects lives. We're talking about who takes the baton from, from October 16, 2022, and leads us into the next four years. Interesting. Yes. He's been a lawmaker. He's yeah. never been a governor. Yes. So these are two different jobs. Let, let me also, let me also, let me also. I, I'm going somewhere, obviously, oh, because you ahead. were talking about the fact that uh, we're looking at clothes and we're, yes, credentials do matter. But we have, like I said, had so many people who have been spoken glowingly well of. In fact, they've had great antecedents. But then when it comes down to doing the job, mm. we see lapses. True. But then... Let's not jump the horse. Okay. Uh, what does Senator Bami Dele have to offer that would make him stand out? Because this election is going to be a fiercely fought battle. We've seen other strong politicians on even the opposite side, so, mm. and even within the party. But what makes him stand out for you as a person? All right. First and foremost, um, thoroughbred Ikiti man. And when I say thoroughbred, I'm, I, I'm saying that in the context of the fact that he understands our peculiarities. He understands the fact that education is our industry, and he wants to focus on that under his art agenda. He also believes very strongly that we need a collegiate leadership at this point in time. We don't need a leadership that talks down on everybody. If, and I hope by the grace of God, as I speak to equity people today, they would understand that this election is just not another election. This is an election that will define not only what happens to us in the immediate terms of it, because we're fast losing it. People are beginning to get hopeless. They're not, they're not. The, the, the thing that makes us want to say with pride that we're equity people, we've lost it or we're losing it. And the only way to get that back 
is to have a collegiate leadership that ensures and assures you that you have a place in government and you have a place and a role to play. Hmm. Now you asked me what is bringing to the table. I told you about being a thoroughbred equity man. And I, of course, you, you, you well say to me that, okay, fine, the other ones are thoroughbred. I agree. But you also will also expect that for a man, and you missed it by saying that he's never been governor. If he's been governor, he won't be running for governor for second time. But let me tell you, he's been prepared for this job. How do I know? Not only um, has he served as special advisor in Lagos, mm -hmm. he served two administrations that battered the renewal of Lagos, starting with Ashura Jibola Amir Tinobu. He was in the incubation room. And everything, I may not be able to speak about the last four years, but I can speak to the last, to the preceding eight years, immediately after the military went back to the barracks. Okwe Mbamdele had taken a seat in the cabinet of Lagos State, and he handed it because he's been able to keep that for 12 years unbroken. You don't keep you in a place like Lagos, where the best of the brains have been hired and head-hunted to form the cabinet. Look at all of the guys, Yemi Oshibajo, with due respect, the vice president, um, DG Budget, Ben Akabweze, um, Arek Beshola, um, Oriloku Adefulire, um, 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 the postmaster general today, and a whole lot of, 10 of them, 10 of them were his colleagues in cabinet. And of course, when you start the journey of transformation, even if you're a bystander, and Okoyemi Bamidili wasn't a bystander. Go and check the records of his achievement to the, I mean, to the glory of God and his effort and his vision. We have an uh, Unicorn Stadium today. And many more, you know, that I cannot um, begin to espouse. So what you're talking about, great. It's very beautiful, the things yes. that you have if you're outlined. Going, but you know the Nigeria I'm, of today, let me, let me tell, let the Akiti state of today, let me land on it's that. not the Akiti or the Lagos state of Bola um, uh, Tinubu. Things have changed. Exactly. The things that Akiti people want mm -hmm. may not necessarily be the things that he had to mm. offer when he was in Lagos State government. Now, now, so, now, now, the twenty-first century administration has equal denomination. You should be able to fit into your government and governors. The metrics of your government and governors should be able to, if you take it and slam into the United States, into New York State, for instance, you should be able to fit. Because well, wanna, New Yorkers want different things. Let New me Yorkers oh, have hang on a second. Hang on a second. Today, nobody is talking about leadership that is talking about uh, little things about power, pay salaries, and things like that. We're talking about strategic linkages that delivers. The 21st century is going to be one that will task your strategic capacity to leverage on collaborative ventures. Hmm. And, and those, yes. And, and so, if you come to this election and you cannot clearly show that you have, you are surrounded by resources that you can tap into and use that for the purpose and the benefits of the people, you don't have a business looking for this job. So let's talk about the economy of equity state, yes. which should be the basic, um, that's the first thing that mm. the governor should concern himself, anybody who becomes governor yeah. or anybody running for that office. Mm -hmm. How... What is his plan in yeah. developing the economy of a kitty state? Mm. We have underemployment, we have uh, unemployment, mm. we have brain drain, we have a lot of young people mm. who have unfortunately become the devil's workshop mm. because there's nothing to do. And like you said, he, he's capitalizing on education, but what happens? There are lots of people who've graduated, universities are churning them out in their numbers, mm. but there's nothing to do. Mm. What is his campaign doing in that direction? Let me, let me tell you very clearly that first and foremost, I ran for the same seat in 2018. I'd been the director general of, of a gubernatorial campaign before and I ran a damn good campaign. And I'm, I'm not saying that, I mean, people can spot check that, but the truth of the matter is that I'm in a position to speak about, first and foremost, somebody who has capacity to get the job done. I didn't just isolate education, because education is central to everything, but then you mentioned the economy. Economy feeds into education, okay? Now, we're talking about knowledge-driven economy today. We're not talking about economy that is striving on mineral resources anymore. There are nations of the world that have huge deposits of crude, hydrocarbons, but won't touch it. 
Listen, this device generates more money for Finland than, money, than, than crude oil. And we live our lives off this. So if you tap into the potential, the value proposition that this delivers, you would have turned. And the United States is a very small state anyway. And obviously, we're not that sophisticated. That means our demands are modest. And because our demands are modest, we will not task you like Lagos people will task this governor. So if you have a governor who understands how the turnaround of Lagos happened and is able to bring that vision and tweak with it to fit our local realities, what will you, what will you expect? I mean, you're not looking, it is not looking for a governor who, after turning the last sheet of his inauguration speech, is wondering, oh, so I'm here. What did you do? We're looking for a governor who can plug into his local realities, who can plug into experiences, who can plug into exposure, and say, OK, fine. We need to deal with the issue of reordering and renegotiation of our debts. And he knows to call. Somebody who brings recall and recognition to the table. You don't want a governor who needs to be introduced to somebody to where he matters. You don't want a government that will be run by proxy. What exactly are you so, going at here? Are you in one way saying that the government of Governor Fayemi is being run by proxy? I'm not talking about go so, Governor so Fayemi. What government are you All I'm saying is to? that I'm talking about who takes over the baton from Dr. Fayemi. Dr. Fayemi has done his bit anyway, and he's exiting in maybe eight months, nine months. So the question to ask is, and again, you see, one of the things that worries me is that there's a political culture that tends to start and end with elections. Nobody talks about the management of succession. Nobody, management, nobody talks about the leadership management that ensures that everybody has a vision that we can plug into. And regardless of who comes in, you are, you are fired. Is that not the job of yeah. the people who are stakeholders in exactly. Ekiti State? And I'm not just talking, everybody in Ekiti is a stakeholder. Right. I'm talking about the elder statesmen, mm. the people who may call themselves kingmakers. Is there not supposed to be a succession plan? I mean, many people will point to Lagos as a state that has a succession plan mm. of sorts. Mm -hmm. but, but there are states who also have that plan. For example, I just realized that Anambra does have a committee that is being set up for governance. And there are many people who sit in that committee. One of the persons who was heading that committee is now the governor in waiting of a number of states. Why can't Ekiti also come up with that plan? In, well, you, 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 I think you have the gift of Nostradamus. You now know what I'm talking about. This is one of the reasons why we need a man like Okoye Mbavidele at this time. Having seen how he worked in Lagos, having seen how the GNC works around supporting the governor. And we don't have a GNC in Ekiti, for instance. And GNC, what GNC does is that government, uh, it pro they provide the local realities. They make the government and the governor see the dimensions that they don't see as political people. Now, Anoka Emi Bamidele, who has seen that work in Lagos, now is in a position to run, like he said, a collegiate leadership that will ensure that going forward, we don't even have to get into the tussle of six people, 30 people running for elections. It's an aberration. And you see, there's mutual distrust when you find a situation where 30, 3, 6, 7, 10 people are running for elections. And there's nobody, not to rein them in, but to say, come, we have ethos, we have a creed that must guide our succession because we've all collectively built this party. It is not a personal property. But then that's where the problem is. Yes. The legacy of Ekiti State or the progress that yes. Ekiti State should um, be experiencing in the years to come mm. should not boil down to a party, should it? Does it mean that only the APC has the wealth of knowledge of the people who need to lead Ekiti State or the ideas that, have, that can take the state ahead? Shouldn't we be talking about Ekiti people as a whole and not necessarily a party? You know, um, you know... I mean, I know that you're here to speak for your party, but... Right. Again, that's very correct, but I spoke about your political culture. And that political culture is not tied to APC alone. It also reflects on the other parties. In any case, why should we have two political parties, dominant political parties? Why can't we have somebody who says, I don't care about PDP, I don't care about APC, I want to give it a shot headlong? Well, on the basis of character, competence, capability, and ability to deliver.
But that amounts to being an independent candidate, and the no, constitution, no, doesn't, the constitution no, no. does not make room for that. And of course, you know that the parties do have egos, so you can't just say, "Well, let's collapse all our structures into one." Person. Don't, don't forget, don't forget that. I'm uh, asking, can uh, that happen? Uh, of course, yes, he could. Um, Doctor Doctor Rama, in Nigeria, Doctor Abrama Mimiko pulled it with Labour Party in Ondo State. Everybody, he had only just left as minister of the PDP. And President Obasanjo did everything to get him to run on the ticket of the PDP. And he said no. And he didn't want to have anything to do with us as ACN at the time. And he said he was going to fly his own, fly his own um, play. And he did. And he won. Oshio Mole did the same thing. So, I, 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 for some time with Labour Party, what I'm, try, what I'm trying to say is that we must, um, and this is another, another dimension of our politics. A politics a political culture that tends to just glorify. You see all of the agitations going on now. You see all of the going on now. As soon as elections are done and over with. But does, and then we wait. But, but does that not also you. point to a house that is not in order? Because at some point, the party will know who the cap fits one way or the other. And exactly. Using the word, but, but then it does, I'm still asking the same question, does it not show a house that is not in order? It's okay to throw your hat into the ring, but should we be seeing the level of agitation that we're seeing right now? Now, what, 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 there must be, even, even in Boy Scout or in Girls Guide, there are people who aspire to head or to lead them. Of course. In, in secondary school or nursery school, there are people who will never make it to the front of the seat, front of the class. Not because they're not brilliant, but by character. And you get into the academics, you say, having satisfied this university in character and learning. And the Bible expressly scared. I mean, the Bible has records for this. He said, come with your strong reasons. Whoever wants, if there's no culture to kind of define who could run, then what you will be bringing to the table should be the things that you want. And I, in the, at this election, let me tell you, background matters. This is a party of history. And there's no way you forget your history that you'll be able to consolidate your future. Okoyami Bamidele had been this and that, and, and I'm surprised that you're saying credentials don't matter. Because it's because... We, because we've seen okay, these credentials. I, I just asked you a question, sweetheart. I just asked you a question. Will you give your wedding dress to a tailor in training. Well, Nigeria is not a wedding dress. We're talking about serious issues I'm here. Talking about, that's what I'm saying. As little as that, if you're, okay, fine. If your cousin and your, your cousin or brother or whoever is visually impaired, mentally challenged, will you put him behind the steering? You wouldn't do that. And it is even more important because by that stroke of pen, the fortunes and the fate of money, of many, will be consigned to dustbin of history by wrong decision. And this is why I said to myself, let me tell you, I'm not a political hireling. Nobody can hire me. Indeed, I had said I was, I was done with this. But you were hired. That's not possible. How much are you going to pay me? But you are hired. I have, I have a lot. But you're running a campaign, and you're being paid to run that campaign. No, you're no, doing no. it for free. I'm not even are you doing it free. Are you doing it for free? Can you go on the record to say you are doing this Look at for it. Free? Look at me. Zero naira. How much is he going to pay me? I'm not rich, but I'm comfortable in my, in my own skin. And I don't need to prove a point. Let me meet you. Let me, let me tell you this. The one thing that binds me and Senator Michael Opemi Bamidele on this voyage is the interest of the people of Egypt State, for the love of the people and for the love of the state. No more. Great. Don't forget that her kids and kin, where are you from anyway? Cross River. Ah, okay, now I know. If anything is happening What does to, that mean? Right. You may not see the passion. Look at what your former governor before he decamped. Look at what he did in that place. I've been to Korshiv a couple of times. Ben Ayade flipped things. Taking it over from uh, Duke, taking it over from Lee Elimoke, and look at that succession. Okay, okay, ah, now I know. That's a perfect example. Look at that trajectory. Lee Elimoke to Donald, no, no, Donald Duke, Lee Elimoke, and no, no, no. Yes, they, somebody, somebody stepped out of line now, but look at, the progress that was done, that was achieved, when that consistency, when that track trajectory was complied with. I need to get that done in my state. I need fewer people asking me for sustenance. 
Mm. Yes. Well, and you fear people running the streets with Okada. And you fear people wondering where that's the next meal is coming that's from. That's a necessary means of transportation. You can't rule it out, can you? What did you say? You're saying Okada is no longer a means of transportation? Oh, sweetheart. But let's I move on to... That. I'm not just reset. Let's move on to other issues. Let's talk about the party again quickly. Okay. Um, there are rumors that the governor might have someone who's going to succeed him. Some, there are allegations. It, of, it would appear so. Of, um, yes. Some are saying that his SSG might be the one um, who would be imposed on the party. And, I, and your candidate at some point, with other candidates, have spoken up about it, mm. saying that um, the party members should resist this. Why would there be such speculations? Why would the governor want to anoint a person? I mean, is that how he came to be? You know, you know, you know, you know, <laughs> Yorubas have been saying, the witch cried last night and the child died today. There's, there's an interesting link between the witch, the crying of the witch, overnight, and the child that died today. That's when the myth used to be that witches used to kill people. All right. I'm not too sure they're interested in killing anybody anymore. <clears throat> they, they, they're getting busy with something else. Um, again, this guy that's being touted as the governor's um, um, preferred candidate, candidate oh. maybe, Kat Aspinan, is my very good friend. We've come way back 35 years. So I told him, I made him a promise. I am never going to attack your person until you attack me, you know. And Biodu also has the record of who I am, and I say that very modestly. Listen, I have seen all of this party, the, the movement of this party, the evolutionary trend of this party, up on, from AC through, no, from ACD through AC to ACN and then eventually to APC. I have seen it all, okay? And so I'm in a position to know that this was what we did wrong at this time. This was what we did right. And this is what we can build upon and all of those things. And that's why I am comfortable in my skin. And Ekiti people. And I hope the delegates also know that. that. But talking about Biodun, Biodun is a fine gentleman. I like him. He's my friend. We're from first day, I call him a base city. And he calls me away. We're close. But I hope that this doesn't... And I hope that... Because I explained to him, listen, it's going to be very difficult for you to function. There's no doubt about it. And I say that Why today. do you think so? Quickly, because, because, the, I mean, the, the forces that, that's going to bring, that's attempting to bring people building into this race, they are so overbearing. Yes, these forces. And there's nobody that would deny that. And I'm waiting for people to engage me on this fact. His campaign office today, all of a sudden, had become the campaign, I mean, it used to be the situation um, um, office of the governor. Do you understand what I'm saying? Where the governor operated from as, a, as an aspirant and then it has been given to him. The, the governor has the right, absolute right, to field anybody. But it would make a lot of sense to let the system produce the next leadership. You All know right. why? We will get past this point, but our copious will be waiting for us in front, which is the general election. Well, and of course, we're waiting on the party primaries to see who emerges at the end of the day. But in the meantime, I want to say thank you to you for being part of this conversation. Uh, always uh, a pleasure. Thank you very much. Um, um, I, I, I mean, this is the first time I'm, I'm coming to your studio, and I think it's a nice place. Yes. And um, I appreciate the fact that you give us an opportunity to speak, and all I hope right. to be back here. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. When we return, we'll discuss the illegal oil mining activities plaguing River State and, of course, the suit. Stay with us. We'll be right back.